Well, welcome everybody to UPA Live. I think you're seeing my wrong screen, aren't you? But uh, we just wanted to remind you next week we have a, we have uh, John McBride, who's who's an incredible social media manager, uh, does a lot of speaking across the country. He's gonna he's doing a session for us, just Instagram for university photographers with with things that are specific to us. So if you have like certain questions you'd like answered, feel free to send me an email and, uh, and I'll prepare him so that he can make sure and answer and help you in the best way that you need help. Um, and then again, we have the digital symposium coming up in a couple weeks. It's only a couple weeks away, which is crazy. Um, we actually just have some new speakers that have confirmed. So next, I think next week, Glenn will have an announcement about some things All coming right. up. Lots of exciting things for the digital symposium. Some things we didn't think were gonna happen have happened. So uh, we'll have more information coming out about that. Again, you can go to the upa.org, uh, uh, this link right here, digital symposium, and we'll be posting the new speakers and schedule there uh, real soon. So anyway, that's kind of where we're looking like. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn the time over to Glenn, who's gonna, gonna be speaking with us today about Adobe Bridge. And again, if you have Yay. any, I'll be helping out in the chat box and just put him in the chat box and I'll, I'll keep on stopping Glenn mid-sentence. So I'm just curious, um, does anybody use Bridge besides me? I might be the only one. I do. Okay. One, two, okay. three. All right, good. Um, Got it open right now. Beautiful. So really, this is, wasn't a choice early on um, to use Bridge or not use Bridge. Um, it was what was available. So it was kind of legacy. Um, over time, uh, you've been able to, it's improved slowly. Uh, so there's more features. Uh, and after watching what uh, Jaron um, and uh, Camera Bits uh, talked about, also Ken, there's still, there's a lot of things that are in Bridge that are also in Photo Mechanic. Now, the big issue is, is it as fast? Mm, I don't know. Well, we'll see. But uh, one of the reasons I liked Bridge was back in the day, and we're talking like 2005, it actually put the metadata in the file. Okay, so it was really important when you're doing a digital asset management system that the information be in the file and not in a database. Way back when, most databases were a separate uh, file, and that, that's a problem. Databases break, you will have issues. So by putting it in the file was really good. Now, I know Jaron talked about their their um, their files are CR2 or whatever CRW, whatever Canon's raw format is, or RAF if you're on a Fuji. Um, not converting to DNG. Uh, when I started doing more, I started converting to DNG primarily because it doesn't use the XMP sidecar file. All the information is in one file. My fear was if something were to happen to a drive physically, it couldn't match up again later. If something got corrupted, I didn't have to worry about going in and redoing settings or other uh, information. So I always convert to DNG um, and that way I know all the data is in the file. Does that make sense? Everybody who's had a database break? Everybody have that happen? We did. I don't think it was, it was due to user error by the nerds. Um, the issue was, you know, all of a sudden we don't have a database anymore, but because the information was in the files, they rebuilt it um, over uh, the weekend and we were back running. So it's really important. Okay. Bridge is pretty complicated at points. Um, it's gotten better in some respects but I will throw Adobe under the bus now. The latest update kind of screwed things up, um, in my opinion. Uh, and they know about it, but they are not addressing it. And when I upload some photos, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It adds about you know, six steps that don't take long in the ingestion process, but it's enough to make me angry every day uh, to do that. Um, so Jay says, uh, the other reasons to convert to DNG back in, I'd say back in the day, um, if you 
got a new camera and there wasn't an Adobe update, you may not be able to read the raw files. So you'd have to use the free converter to convert to DNG to see a raw file. Um, this way I know you don't have to worry about it's future proofing uh, your files. Um, now, Adobe's really good. A lot of these other readers are really good. I don't know if we'll have that issue, but it's enough to uh, scare me. Uh, like all of a sudden you upgrade your new camera, you shoot something and now you can't read the files. Uh, you need them right away, so you're scrambling. Uh, shit. And I convert on ingestion, so it just runs through and does them immediately. Uh, and I'll show you that. Other questions or concerns? Or will you have those when I start showing what I do? Yeah, well, if, if, if they come up, we'll just go ahead and throw them at you. Go ahead. And We're a small group. So I have to I have to be a little. Here's my new. Oh. Ooh, new. I really like it. But then again. Show off. Show I off. I always really like it. Whenever you, and you guys know this, it, maybe February, maybe January, you should have your purchases planned out for the next spring. Because everybody knows, now maybe this won't happen for another couple of years, but they always say, oh, we found some budget money. Do you guys need anything? It's always better to have that quote right in your hand or go back to your desk and email it to your boss. Because by the time you ask you know, all your retailers to get you three quotes on anything, the money's gonna be gone. And that's what happened. Come January, I knew, the, I knew the price. I sent it in and went, as soon as we know, can we get it done? And then it got done probably within two, three weeks. We had a purchase order. So they're not gonna cancel a purchase order, even though we needed the money. So I don't know. Always be ready. Good okay. advice. Anyway, here we go. So I'm gonna take over the screen here for a second. All right, so here's Bridge. Everybody look familiar. Um, if you can still see me in your upper right corner, there's my little XQD card. I'm just gonna go ahead and, so this is kind of going through what I do, insert it into the reader, give it a second. It's gonna launch Bridge. Now this is where Photo Downloader has issues and it's, it may be an ACR issue, maybe a Bridge issue it should remember your settings. It doesn't, and that's my big complaint. So you have to choose which, uh, which card you're gonna read from, you have to choose where it's going. Now, it should remember this. Now, if you watch carefully here, you'll see it's close. It's going, uh, when it first loaded, it showed where I wanted to go. Then it switches back to its default. So. I've created a folder called Photos, and it lives on my desktop. It's the same way on my work computer, same on my, um, my laptop. Choose that. All the images go in there, and it's based on standardized date. Okay, year, month, day. Or is it, yeah. So you click open. Again, that should remember all of this. It did for years until this latest update. Uh, convert to DNG, uh, delete original files. Uh, I know some people say, why not just leave them on the card? Again, it speeds up. I don't have to worry about deleting files off my card later. Uh, you can have a secondary save point here. So you couldn't create something on a server, another part of your computer, but why double up, especially after a football game, after a basketball game, when you might have, you know, a thousand images, 2000 images that um, you don't really want to have to go through again. Now, normally I have this advanced dialog box as the default. Uh, because Adobe doesn't remember that, it annoys me. Um, now, for on ingestion, I've created a metadata template uh, for our videographer, uh, my freelance, uh, my chief freelance shooter. And then <clears throat> this one was created 15 years ago. I didn't realize I could name it my name, but it's the basic IPTC information. And it's been something we've used forever. So you can choose that and it'll add all that data on ingestion. So you're ready. Okay, it's going to the right place. 
and you put go. And at this point, you can see it's converting and ingesting. Um, now, I've only got one XQD card in the new camera. Uh, normally, the JPEGs are stored on the second slot, and it's just doing DNGs. Uh, this time, however, it's uh, ingesting the JPEGs as well. Um, and it's not terribly slow. Uh, works pretty well. Now, Jaron, is this faster or slower than Photo Mechanic? No comment. Okay. In 2017, when I opened up Bridge at the symposium, I think Jaron's heart skipped a beat. And he's like, what, you're still using Bridge? Okay, we do get a confirmation. Uh, do you want to delete the files? Click yes. So now they're off. Now it's going to do its Adobe thing, and it'll open up a bridge window uh, with the files. So everybody's got a different bridge workspace. I'm not sure why this one does it like this, but you know it does. Being difficult. So there we go. All right, so here you can see on my desktop, this is where the photos are. You can expand that, scroll to the bottom. And here are the images I created yesterday, which a lot of you may have already seen. Um, and you'll notice that there are JPEG and DNG files. Um, so the easiest way I find to deal with this is use the filter function. First thing I do is I select JPEG files. So now all the JPEGs are selected. You do a Command A or whatever it is on a Windows machine. Select all the files. And then I use the delete key to add a reject tag to everything. All right, I'm not deleting them. I'm just saying. So everything gets a reject. Now, you can unclick that uh, JPEG and now click no rating and I'm left with just the JPEG or the DNG files. Okay, so I just trying some color testing. Sorry about that. Nice to walk through your neighborhood and find things like that. Anyway, so now I've got DNG files that I can go through and make decisions on. Obviously, I miss focus here, so I just click delete, and it hides it. Again, it's just assigning a reject tag to the image. It's not really deleting it. And you can move through rather quickly. Uh, like the clouds, don't like the clouds, I don't know. It's pretty good. What, what is the key again for the reject that you're, you're assigned? Uh, delete key. Delete key, and then you can custom assign any key pretty much to do these functions, right? Um, I, that I'm not positive on. The first time you click delete in bridge, it'll give you a dialog box that says, do you want to delete this or mark it as reject? Yeah, I, I think you can go in and customize. To, for example, on Photo Mechanic, I've changed my keys to something that's right next to the edge of the keyboard to make it easier so I have to reach. I'm yeah. pretty sure the same bridge has the same yeah. functionality. So on this, I can just, you know, ride the down arrow with my thumb and one finger on delete and just kind of roll through them pretty quickly. Like, ah, I can't make a decision now, and that looks a little blurry. You know, let's go through. Now, this is interesting, I'll do a little plug for Nikon. So, I really like Live View, since I've been using the, the Z6. Um, and the D5 has uh, Live View, but it's silent. And you don't realize you're taking pictures, and it's just flying away. So you can take just a ton of photos in very short order. Let's focus there. I don't like that. Okay, same thing, different. Okay. So you can just move through rather quickly, um, deleting things you may or may not like, obviously. So my first step is to go through and do a quick edit. Like, um, maybe not. I need the data file. So now I've got essentially what I think will be good images 
that I can go through and look at. Okay. You can also rotate, so you can just go through. My gosh, like that one better. And again, we'll miss. See, it's fairly quickly moving through things uh, in that fashion. Okay. Now, one trick I've, I've learned using Bridge, if I start editing files, so if I want to edit this one for whatever reason, you do Command R, it opens in Adobe Camera Raw. So I go through and I make all my changes, um, do whatever I want, uh, color profile, you know, uh, we go auto, see what that looks like, uh, blacks aren't there, you know, you make all your, whatever you think it needs, <clears throat> and then click done, it saves all those changes. Now you go back and try to add keywords and other metadata, it really slows it down. No idea why but it slows it way down. So I tend, what I do as a matter of habit is add all your metadata first, then go in and do your camera raw edits. Okay. So <clears throat> go through, you may want to add guitar pick, pens. Um, I don't know what else is in there. A tree stump. Uh, Should have used some uh, images from, uh, from work, you know, a little easier. Anyway, so we're gonna collapse. So what I've done all, when it comes to keywording is created a list of keywords. Um, and I'm not, I can't remember how it started and I'm always adding to that list. It's not a, um, a list that we fit everything into. There are times when we're gonna have to add things, you know, new buildings, who knew I'd have a COVID-19 um, keyword? Who knew I'd have coronavirus? Uh, anything like that. So be willing to add to your list. So these are basic titles. Um, we have different awards, which you can be as verbose or as you know short as you want. But these are all things people know uh, to, to look for. All right, different events. So this can be sort of like the structured keywords uh, in Photo Mechanic. You have each building, you have different rooms in that building, different names for that building, um, which building F, uh, it's not F, I get those two mixed up. Building C has always been building C, but years ago we used to call it uh, the College Center, which is a problem because now it's the Science Center. And they named it Building C for Dr. Crowley, who is our president. Um, so you have to keep legacy keywords in mind. Um, another one would be Building T, which for years was known as a CCT or even before that as a Center for Contemporary Technology. So depending upon if you're looking for older photos or newer photos, you may have to search for a couple different things. I really should be going through and adding all those legacy keywords to stuff. One thing I like that improved, I don't know on what version, but if you wanted to add, oh, these are plants, you could start typing plants and you see it first goes to meeting planner. I don't have plants as a keyword. So let's try flowers. So Mary Flowers was one of our state wraps. Oh, there's flowers. So then you can just click that and it adds it as a keyword. Um, maybe somebody wants to say a green uh, initiative. So it could be for the Go Green campaign because you're using plants. The green team, probably not a good keyword, but you can add those things. Anyway, so what's nice is you can type in what you're looking for and it'll find it and then use this little tab key to go to the next one. Now adding keywords is also um, fairly simple. So if we wanted to, if we had a new person, so you can, we have a people category, 
to help find things. So there is our people category. If you click on people, go to this menu, say new sub keyword, and we'll type in, because we got a Jaron Wilkie. So Glenn, one of the questions Chris has is, are these individual keywords or are you selecting a keyword set? Like, is, is there a set of words going with it or are you just adding these individual keywords? It's an individual keyword. You can set up bridge in the preference. So it brings the whole string? Correct. So you'd have the parent keyword for it. So I, and you see the hierarchy I set up. I think it's, yeah, automatically apply yep. parent keyword. So you could set up your keyword structure if you had, um, I can show you one here. So we call our leadership team ELT, executive leadership team. Um, so there's our, everyone who's been on ELT Here's our president. You could select, if I selected Dr. Jenkins, if I had a sub keyword under this, that was president, and you had that box checked in the preferences, you could select president and it automatically um, put in Dr. Sylvia Jenkins and ELT at the same time. Yeah. That's essentially a structured keyword uh, field that way. So fairly simple and just how, how you like to work. Um, unfortunately, we've got so many different um, Dr. Sylvia Jenkins stuff that you know, type correctly. Can you identify with that, Nick? Anyway, you see we've already got all over now. You know, women's leadership. There's just a ton of words. So I like to be able to scroll through to find the exact one I want and then be able to click it and add it that way. The key here is all these are being added to the DNG file. Um, they are in there forever. So that, that makes a huge difference uh, for me. So say we've added all our keywords. Um, I'm happy. Uh, or I should say any other questions regarding keywords? Yep. Uh, could you maybe show the metadata template? What it is that is oh. your standard template? I think people would be interested to see that. Sure, definitely. So go to the metadata tab. Again, your bridge interface may look very different than this one. Um, I, this is what I've always done. There's probably a better one, but when you know where to look for something, really helpful. So you can go in and you can create a metadata template, which is where you would just name it, add things you want, and go through every field. Um, you see here I've got my name. Uh, what else did I put in here? Uh, copyright. copyright status. What's that? Yeah, copyright. Always really important to put. Yeah, in fact, that's one of the first things I say, put in your camera. Just put it in the camera immediately. That way everything created um, gets that tag. So you can add all sorts of information, obviously. And then you just click uh, save. So if we go back to, and then once you have a metadata template, you can apply it. So I get images from Matt or from Linda. I ingest them, I go through my first edit, I add the keywords. Um, if I forget to add them on ingestion, you can just go in and say, replace metadata and then choose whom you want, or you can append the metadata. So again, if you forget, you know, like, oh, I forgot to add it. You wanna to have to select all and retype Linda's name or Matt's name uh, with all their information. You can just append it and add it this way. So for people that may not be adding a lot of um, metadata, what, what are fields that you feel like are really important that people maybe overlook or Thing it, or over the years you've learned, man, I'm really glad I have this information in the metadata. Obviously copyright. I mean, that's just, that protects you, protects your school. Uh, contact information. Um, several times we've had people contact us. Um, there was a grad student from some university who actually saw an image created on the UPAA website 
that and won an award. And because the metadata was still with the image, was able to reach out to us and ask for permission uh, to use the image. Um, so contact information, so email address, phone number, um, obviously your name, um, more information about it than necessary. Uh, there are going to be images that you don't want used. Um, so if it's a, I mean, we've all had that happen, right? Student, faculty, staff, whoever gets either accused or convicted of a crime. We've got to quickly go in and identify that do not use this photo. So adding that metadata, now this would be after the fact, um, would be really important. Um, stuff that you really need, um, I just say contact information probably the most important thing, uh, where to find you uh, in case somebody just stumbles across your image. Does anybody else have suggestions on that? Are, are you adding a, a batch sentence caption uh, to, to your images or? I do for like a sporting event. So it comes to basketball games. After the fact, I will add who we were playing, um, and the final score, win or loss, in the caption field. That way, again, looking ahead in 20 years when somebody's doing a anniversary booklet or something, you know, a throwback Thursday, if we still have those in 20 years, they'll be able to get all the pertinent information, who, what team you're playing, what the final score was. Could you maybe yeah. just demonstrate that so we could see how you do it in Bridge? Sure. Oh, I don't thank know. you, Jaron. So again, uh, metadata is in uh, description field. So again, all the images are, are selected. Go into your description field and type in um, um, I, I go real basic versus uh, since Mark's here, Elgin. Again, and this is where typing is important. Something like that. Now, okay, so enter when you're in the description field on a Mac at least uh, is control enter. Oops, not option enter. Right, oh, function. There you go. So all the, now all that metadata is added. And you can see, uh, I may not show, normally I have the description showing uh, in the preview window here. But if we were to, and I, there's the information on that. And you can see in the description field, it was added to every file. But works really well. Now, individual, like an event, which I absolutely hate, I try to identify everybody in the photo, especially if they're um, donors, uh, if they're political figures, uh, you try to add that information uh, because at some point you will be asked and you find, you know, images of mayor so-and-so. Can you find images of this person? Um, which, because their names are difficult and misspelling somebody's name like that is a problem, um, I try to add them as quickly as I can. Elected officials, and you put their names in and have somebody check those. So you can just go through and click names um, that way. A lot of times I'll also write a caption just to go left to right, who is in the photo, uh, basic stuff like that. Uh, works well, and again, it all translates over to whatever damn system you're using. All right. Okay, other metadata keywords type things? Uh, Mark just wants you to know that their basketball team is not that bad. He wants an accurate score. Okay. Well, you know, I think that was just first half. I mean, they were going to have a good comeback in the second half. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So, again, then it comes time, you know, to edit, command all, and then go into uh, Adobe Camera Raw. Um, sort of my 
I have a default to as shot. It used to be um, a lot of cameras weren't so good how it was created. So I defaulted to auto just to get me closer, but more and more cameras are better. So as shot, or if I choose to shoot on a certain color balance, um, then I know. But to be honest, you almost don't need to, you can change it to anything you want. Uh, we all know that from working with raw files. So then I just simply go through each file and make adjustments. You know, here again, it's a little, a little overexposed. Try to get it right. You know, for contrast, I use the black, oops, wrong slider. There we go. For contrast, I use whites and blacks to add contrast because I can control what I'm after. I'm gonna go through things. I'm a big fan of the dehaze. I think at default setting is probably about five or something like that. Seems to work well, good starting point. Uh, and then shadows are my other favorite. So you can brighten up that space in there. So then you just go through and do the work that we all do. See it pretty. Then when you hit save image, it just, just jumps back into bridge. Correct. So you're good. Click done. It'll do its little number there. And what you, the changes you've made are now applied to that. Um, so now comes, well, what are we going to do with the images? You know, they're on your computer um, and they have to go to a server. So uh, a lot of people working in a server environment or are you working locally on your own computers? I think, I think it's a good mix of both. Okay. So the other reason we chose to stay with Bridge and not go to Lightroom Lightroom's really great and probably does a lot more than Bridge and ACR combined, but it's that cataloging function that just doesn't work for us. Um, we're in our office, everybody's working off uh, the shared uh, drive or our server, so they need access to that. Um, and I don't, we don't need different catalogs for people searching for things. Uh, so we have one place for everybody to go to. So fortunately, let's see if I'm still connected here. Yes. Um, to get to our server, which is, has been wonderful, you can actually see the structure of that. I will write down this password. Right, guess what it was. Ooh. Nine dots, 10 dots, okay. Yeah, we just had to change it. So there's our, so our server is set up that this goes way back to an Apple server. We just kept adding drives and segregating. Uh, since we moved to probably digital photos, probably four, we're on a shared network drive uh, on the college SAN. So it just keeps expanding. And I don't think we'll have anything above four uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, anyway, so we'll just look at this current. So there's our server. Now VPN obviously takes longer than it does on campus. Um, but the structure is set up, goes way back to 2001 when we started shooting digital. Everything was on a disk. So a folder represents a disk way back in the day. And we still held to that same kind of naming convention. So if you want to view this as a, a folder, it's got then four subfolders with fairly descriptive names um, that also in our DAM system convert all the folder names and the hierarchy into keywords. So if you have a long name, it becomes a keyword. So anyway, that's how our folder naming, how we look at things, how we save them. So let me get down to the individual files. So way back, D was for digital. So this started back when we were still shooting film and we had some film shots. So if you needed to find something, you need to know if it was in you need to, the original, if it was on a disc or if it was on film. So D signified digital. We just stuck with it. 475 obviously is the folder. ATP stands for academic theater production. And then a three digit uh, 
number that's unique to that folder um, helps us find stuff. If I were doing it all over again, I'd go to four digits. Um, because graduation, we do, we do catalog over a thousand images. Uh, so that's the thing I'd recommend. Uh, one day I'll have to get a student aid to rename everything uh, with the four digit uh, extension. Okay. So now that we're connected to that server, um, it's listed, what are we currently at? I think 693 VPNs. Who else has this trouble with their VPN? Anyway, does not matter. Okay, there we go. So that's our last folder, the 693. You'll notice now I'm adding more folders um, than I did before. I was trying to do it on a weekly basis, but I figured out quickly I'm going to run out of I'm going to hit 999 probably before I retire. Not looking forward to that day. So I'm going to try to stuff as many as I can from 693 to 999 uh, before I retire and let the next person uh, deal with the nightmare. All right, so back to bridge. So we've saved our images. We've added our keywords. We're very happy. These are our, the ones we're going to keep. <clears throat> now you have a decision here. You can rename and save these immediately to your server, or you can go through and make your selects, like the ones you really, really like. Um, because it's faster, I'm gonna do it at this point. So you pick this first image, you're like, ooh, I really like this one. I use a star system. So command five adds five stars. Uh, notice it disappeared. You just have to choose to reveal the five stars. All right, so I like this one, maybe not. Uh, maybe that one's better. Like that one, you just go through, quickly pick the ones you like the best. Okay, those are my, the ones I like. So now you can, again, select all and go to tools, and go to batch rename. All right, I've got a preset for all the pandemic photos I'm shooting around the neighborhood. But I also have one for Marine Valley, which goes back to my naming convention. And then I can actually choose where the images go. So if you wanted to say these would be I right, call these nature photos. So NAT would be our code. Start naming at one. And then navigate to the latest folder. Click new folder, uh, type whatever description you want, click create, open, and then you can click rename and all the files are renamed and stored on that, in that directory on that server. The thing I do like to do is click Windows compatibility. I'm not sure it makes a difference, but it doesn't hurt. Um, every once in a while, our web people say something's not right. Um, haven't had that complaint since I did this. Um, another option is preserve the current file name, which might be beneficial if you're archiving um, or saving the files to, I think, Jerry, do you do that where you've got them saved somewhere yeah. else under the original name? Well, we, 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 we preserve the current file name. Okay. Okay. So if you did have like a a place where you dump everything. You could keep the current file name uh, and search via that. Um, nice things you can copy to another folder if you like. Like if you want to keep two copies someplace, um, that's fine. Uh, you can also rename. Uh, just for speed's sake, I'm going to rename these in this current file. 
Uh, and this is about how fast it is when it's in a server environment. Um, so not too bad. So imagine that this is now our server um, and you only want to find the five star images. So you can easily go through and pick just five stars and find them that way. Which helps when you're looking you know, for images in your dam, it can be a search criteria. Uh, I've created a five star image smart folder in, in ours. So automatically anything with five stars goes right there. Uh, most of our designers know that's where you look for what I feel are the best photos. They don't even search the entire catalog. Um, but works fairly well. Um, the secret is how comfortable are you with it? Are you quick to move? Uh, and that's why I've had a hard, hard time switching to photo mechanic. I just would have to purpose to get it done and do it. And I tried and I'm just like, you know what? I can work really quickly uh, in this fashion. It works well for me. So a uh, question for you from Chris also. Yeah. Is your server your archive too, or are you using Photo Shelter and Libris? Uh, it's our archive uh, as well. Uh, our IT department is not a cloud-based fan. Um, they're worried that whomever you choose uh, will either change the terms of the agreement, and now you've got to move you know, six terabytes of information back to campus, or they'll go bankrupt, or that's just them. Um, I think I would, follow Jared's recommendation on, um, I'd have a local copy or several, plus I would only put JPEGs on Libris uh, if I had my way uh, and just have people search that way. Currently everybody looks at our, all the designers in our department and actually anybody has access to the raw file. So they're pretty much working off the DNG? Correct. So, but you do have, do you, you do have a photo shelter or Libris account or do you not have yes. one? Yeah, we do. So are you, you're converting to JPEG for that? And what, yep. what goes there, what makes the decision that it goes there versus, you know, not? Primarily we're using that for our uh, wireless workflow, mostly for social media stuff. Um, and also images that uh, outside of the college people need. So news media, um, those few people that want our images for different things, we send them there. Uh, because in the, the current dam that we're using on campus, it's different than Libris. Sorry, Caroline, um, just how they want it. We, um, we don't give them access to that. Um, so outside the campus, you go to photo shelter. Inside, you go to the um, our dam system. Does then, that make sense? Yes, and then Chris's follow-up question is, then the designer can take that DNG and has all the adjustments already made without having to have a sidecar file. That's why you like DNG. Yep. Exactly. Now, the downside to that is early on, they were making their own adjustments. Um, and I remember there was one really nice photo. It was in like the graphic design lab. A uh, young woman with this really great curly hair, you know, big amount, beautiful, is staring closely at this huge monitor, you know, 27 inch iMac. She's in close, she's diligently adjusting her images or whatever she's working on. And I used just the light from the screen to light her face. It was like perfect. And I shot a few frames, really liked it. And graphic designer downloads it and says, yeah, I know I had to spend like four hours lightening her hair. I'm like, no, that was the whole point. No, you know. So uh, I guess I'd rather them do that with the DNG file than a JPEG. So do you, do you try and train them to, if they need to make an adjustment or change crop? How do, how do you train them and help them do it in a way um, that would not be? A squirt, squirt bottle in a newspaper. <laughs> uh, it works uh, uh, pretty well. Actually, it, you just try to work with them. Like, hey, I saw, you know, if you have a question, let me help you learn how to adjust it. Um, I mean, it took a while for them to understand what camera raw was because they would just open them in Photoshop. 
and then start doing layers and levels and all this destructive editing. I'm like, you really can probably do all this and more if you just do it in camera raw and you still have the raw file to work from. So if you make it black and white, you really make it high contrast. And then the client says, no, I'd rather it be in color. You can just go back, undo your adjustments and you've got the color image. You know, it's not wasted time. So they're getting there. I think there may be one old school designer that still won't work on an image until it's converted to CMYK. And it's like, no, we really work in RGB space. Wow. Better off. But, Is, um, when they're searching for things on your server, when your designers, you're designers, you're in office people, what is the way that they're searching for them? Are they looking for keywords? Are they, what, how do they work? Uh, keywords. Um, so, got too many tabs open, sorry. Come on, it's behind there now. So this is the dam we use. And we've got older photos, 2001 to 2013 are in one catalog. And then the newest stuff is 2013 and on. Um, and we'll adjust that um, probably in the next couple of years. Yeah. So I tend to like using this XF date taken. So when was the image created and filter down from it. So the newest stuff is always on top. So if we wanted to find pictures of our president. Um, just type her name in, it autofills, um, and then pops up. So they're pretty comfortable with your keyword yeah. set. They know it, they use it. Yeah, I think I had one recently want honors photos. So, And again, it's like searching for anything. Start at the, the most broad term and then filter your way down. So for honors, you can probably get way too much. You can go honors pinning, bowling party, chemistry, a CPR class, um, even down to if they had, you know, you had a keyword for honors class. Um, so searching that way. And then click on the images, you'll see Here's a description that was added. Um, I can't remember, I don't even remember that event, but it shows everything about the file. That's right, it's rated as five stars. Um, variety of things, obviously all the things you need. Well, group, we have, uh, we have about 10 minutes left in the session. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, throw them in the chat or ask them, what, what would you like to know? Uh, so Glenn, I'll, while we're waiting, I have a question. So I have, I did use bridge in the day, especially for converting um, raw files. And uh, honestly, it's been years since I've used bridge. It looks like they've improved it quite a bit. Um, but I, I think the last time I opened bridge was about 10 years ago. And I think it's still trying to open. What are, what are tips that you have to speed up bridge? Have you learned it, tricks to, to make it work faster? It really comes down to the preferences file. There's a lot of stuff in here, most of which I don't understand, to be honest. I mean, it's like, how many know your the camera menu structure? Um, but you can do things like you know, monitor size previews, you know, software rendering, uh, start bridge at login. It's, it's working really quickly. Um, well, the, running here, I think, is the key, Glenn. Cash, cash was not yeah, something that was control over in the old days. Yeah, you can increase this. Um, you can change the preview size. You can keep 100% of your preview size, or you can take it down to medium. I find medium works pretty well. Uh, if you're going to go in and do some real editing, it's going to be in Photoshop, so you'll be working on the real file. Um, you can purge the cache if it's over 30 days. This becomes an issue when you're at work because I'm connected to the server constantly. And if it's keeping caches of, you know, 400,000 images active, I mean, 
the cache size is going to be just bloated and you'll get errors after a while. So purge the cache on stuff that's older than 30 days. That's fine. If you find you can change that, if you know you're going to be going back three months, make it 90 days. Um, but a little time waiting for those older images to draw a preview isn't going to kill you versus having errors when it tries to load them all. Um, that's one thing I would say. There's, I mean, I mean, some of these I haven't noticed for a while. Um, you can change what it does with any file. The other really great advantage to Bridge, you can add keywords. The same keyword list I share with my video guy, and he's adding the same keywords to all his video clips. So when we add those to the dam, people can search for video clips the same way as they're searching for uh, photos. Again, if you keep things consistent, people are able to find things a little more easily. Um, it's like, well, boy, that, that video of so-and-so, I can't find it. Well, search for it on the asset management and you'll find it. Yeah, it's interesting to me how Adobe, you know, they've done a good job of unifying a lot of what they're doing. I mean, the engines are very similar between Lightroom and Camera Raw and Bridge. It's just different interfaces, different ways of going about it. So, um, yeah. do you have any questions out there in the group? So, if you were to make your your elevator pitch for, for why people should look at using Bridge, what is it, Glenn? It's free. You don't even need Adobe Suite to use it. Um, it embeds the. It, it, you're, I'm confident every file or every bit of metadata is in the file. Critical. When your database breaks, it's a bad, bad day. I think Austin said he had to redo his um, because they're switching a server, which I'm like, oh man, that'd be a nightmare. Um, the other reason, um, familiarity. Uh, honestly, for me, I, I work in it quickly. Uh, I'm watching Nate and um, Jaron do their thing. I'm like, yep, I know exactly what they're doing. And having that ability to move quickly between things. Um, I think the, the key one is if you're on a budget, um, I know people are, especially now, are like, uh, I can't come up with 70 bucks to buy camera bits uh, for the mechanic. That, that really hurts. It's terrible that that's the case, but it comes free with, with Bridge uh, or with, uh, it's just a free program. So you can grab it and do what you need to do. And I think it's one we do overlook. You know, we do. We, yeah. There's not much talk about it. So it's good to have uh, that information out there. I, 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 I've, tried, I've tried Lightroom in the past too the same issues I've had with Lightroom with the catalog, especially when you're managing large archives, multiple photographers. Are there many photographers out here? Are you guys using Lightroom? Is Lightroom something you'd like to talk about? I see some yeses, some noes. Uh, I think we're probably all in the same boat as is Lightroom. Just, it just, it gets overwhelmed trying to, Lightroom tries to make things kind of simple and a streamlined, but boy, that catalog is what kills Lightroom. I wish there was a better way to manage and deal with that. Cause I think, Lightroom has some really cool features, and for some people, their workflow, the way they work, Lightroom's ideal. But it, so Robert, looks like you, you use it, and uh, it is, it's an interesting program. Uh, just last comments, first of all, from Chris. Nate looks lonely in the empty stands, I agree. But social distancing, guys, we, he's, I'm proud of him, way to go. Um, and it looks like we do have some interest, so we'll look at that. Um, yeah. Any other questions for Glenn? Is it helpful? Did you learn anything today? Nothing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think I, something? I think I think people did learn some things. So okay. uh, good. It's it's just a different way to probably do what you all are doing. I mean, you know, you find a way and you do it. You know. Okay. And if you have questions um, about anything, let me know. Um, email me or whatever. We can uh, talk through it. Or I'd be willing to know your tips and tricks too, because you know it's like Photoshop. You use one percent of it. I know there's stuff I'm missing. Awesome. Well, thanks, Glenn. Good lunch. All right. Cool. Hey, Glenn. Doesn't it look like he's at a sporting event at Elgin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so funny, Mark, when everyone was worried about, you know, uh, spectator list NCAA sports. I'm like, 
Welcome to the NJC AA. <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah, we usually have more people on the floors at our events than we do in the stands. Seriously, that's no joke. So we were joking about that the other day. Like, if we have a football game with nobody in the stands, we're going to have to move some of those reporters into the stands so they're on the sidelines so I have some space, you know. Yeah, you, you have, like, two angles. They all sit right there, and that's your only angle, and then this way. Right? Yeah, you know. Anyway. Cool. Well, guys, we'll see you again next week. We're going to be an uh, Instagram expert coming in. So if you have questions, if there's things you want to know, send us an email so we can get him prepared for it. But otherwise, thanks for joining us today. All right. Good to see you guys.